to, to work on this. Okay. So beautiful, powerful people of the world. Don't mind the noise. I can hear the glory more than the noise. <laughs> There's something going on around my house, but you know what? It's to beautify my house. So please don't complain. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm very excited to have a woman who's gonna go and drill on you what is best for you. We're gonna tackle about self-confidence and self-discovery. And so without further ado, this woman of God, her name's Rachel Jenks. Say hi, please, Rachel. Hello, I'm so honored to be here with you. Look at the background, it says brand boss. Okay, he, she, I'm so sure she's not bossy, but she just knows her authority right? Rocket girlfriend. So we want to know, we want to know who this pro is. <laughs> who Rachel um, Jenks is first and foremost. So Rachel, you know, just give us a little bit of your background. Sure. And then at the same time, you know, background when you didn't have Jesus yet. And then okay. you know, we'll, 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 we'll just roll with it. Sure. So I actually have been incredibly blessed to have Jesus for most of my journey. I met him at two and a half years old, and I grew up knowing that Jesus was my best friend. We used to take long walks together every day. I loved it. And I just, that was never a question in my mind. But I saw Jesus so much more clearly than I saw myself. And I feel like that's something that many of us have in common. And so I am so honored to be here today to tackle this and to share my story. My story is long, so I'll share a little snippet of it. But, uh, you know, my entire life, I have been different. And I have never fit in with any social circle in my entire life. And I've come to realize that I probably never will. You know, at five yeah, feet tall, yeah. right? <laughs> I am a classmate. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I am five feet tall when the sun is shining, as I like to say. And uh, I have always been the shortest, the smallest. I was the pastor's kid. I was the nerd who actually loved learning, loved school. I still love learning. I would rather have my nose in a book than in front of a video game. I would rather be outside exploring than doing just about anything else. And so in all of my life, I never fit in, Ruth, never. And growing up, that was such a source of pain and rejection for me. And I know it can be for a lot of people because, you know, when you're growing up and that whole thing about the playground and you just want to fit in, right? You just yeah. want to fit in. You just want to be like everybody else. Uh -huh. So as I grew up with that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait yeah. a minute. Oh, you just started three seconds ago and I'm already wanting to unpack so <laughs> I think this is going to be like for a week, we're going to be talking about this. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Listen, guys, I love that she's actually reminding us that if you have babies that are very tiny, know that Jesus is talking to them. Yes. And you know what? Do not stop them. You know, I'm the same, Rachel, when I was a kid, my sister thought I was crazy because I always talked to someone, but I've always had that imaginary friend. That's my Jesus. Come on. And then she was, she was saying that she was walking all the time with, with, with Jesus, but then she saw Jesus far. I mean, she, she, she magnified the Lord, but really didn't really look at herself. Oh my gosh. And she, she never fit in present who's there who has been there and who's going through that listen it's normal go ahead oh <laughs> well, i want to i want to go back to something you just said because i magnified jesus more than i magnified myself magnified yourself. yeah that's what you said here's a fun fact about me i said i love being outside i have such a deep connection i think my cat's gonna come say hello this is mr <laughs> knightley <laughs> hiya <laughs> He likes to uh, make an appearance very often. Go ahead, come across. You gonna come across? <laughs> Thinking about it. Um, so I have such a deep love for creation mm -hmm. and I am enamored by mountains and by splendor. And I can stand in awe oh of the beauty of creation for hours. But you know what? This is his creation too. Mm -hmm. 
And it took me most of my life to see that and to see the beauty of his creation in me. Yeah, that is it. That's the blind spot. That is the blinder. That is the deception that we're going to unpack today. Because really, honestly, it is so easy to be blinded by that, to not see, to not see, to not like what you see, to not like you. Ah, that's yes. okay. Stop. Thank you. Yeah, for coming. <laughs> yeah my pleasure. Ooh. So, oh, Holy Spirit, I feel it. Oh. So what was your discovery? How did, what, tell us. Yeah. So I want to give you a little, I feel like I'm supposed to share another little part of my journey about the pain. So when we don't, when we admire and appreciate a sunset more than we appreciate ourselves, sometimes that even includes our physical temples. And for me, that was a journey with anorexia as well. And so there was this whole mindset and unhealthy mindsets and trying to be somebody other than who I was. And I know for all of us, our journeys look different, right? Each one of us have our own. And for me, it was something that I could control. Some people get into anorexia to lose weight, right? When I became anorexic, this is a story I've pretty much never told, but when I became anorexic, I was 96 pounds. I didn't have anything to lose, right? I didn't. But I was in a season of my life where it felt like everything was spinning out of control. My best friend almost died three times that year from all kinds of crazy medical stuff. We had a foreign exchange student living with us who tried to tear my family apart. I mean, it was just, everything was spiraling out of control. It was my heart attack. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. How how old were you when you started to feel like, okay, it's not right. There's something wrong. Because you you, yeah, like, like you become you started not feeling like you fit it in. So oh, my whole life. <laughs> yeah. But what was, what was the awakening so, that you are not fitting in? So this particular year, I was 16 years old. And I was looking at all of my friends and how their lives were playing out. And my life didn't look like any of theirs. Okay. And then all of this stuff was spiraling around me. And like yeah. I said, You know, my best friend who I really dearly loved and looked up to, and she was one of the cool kids, right? I was the nerdy sidekick and she was the cool kid. (laughs) And she almost died three times that year of horrific, horrific stuff. And so all of these things were spiraling out of control around me. And so what became, what began as like, I'll just be transparent and share what my, what our foreign exchange student said to me. And she was like, Rachel, you are so skinny. Guys would like you if only you would lose your butt. She said that to me. If yeah. Only you would lose a what? Lose your butt. This is all women. So I can say that. Right. So, so, but I have a curvature in my spine, mm. so I will never lose my butt. And I've come to see that that's actually a gift that God gave me. (laughs) But at that season of my life, you know, it's such a pivotal, like, oh, do you guys like me? Oh, is this like, there's so much happening and you're so aware Mm -hmm. of your physical appearance. And so when I didn't fit in academically because I loved learning and because I was so smart. And when I didn't fit in because I was the ballerina who walked funny down the halls of the school and I didn't fit in because I was the pastor's kid and I didn't fit in because I was so small and I didn't fit in because I was into arts when everybody else was into sports. Like all of these things, when I didn't fit in all these areas, this became something I could control or attempt to control. Wait and a minute, so, wait a minute. So yeah. did you guys see what's going on here? Everything was outside. Everything was external. Everything was comparison. Everything was everybody else. Everything was never you. So the value that you have put yourself into was what you saw. And that is the beginning. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. And then, so it's like, you know, everything else they're doing. So everybody else is cool and not me. Uh, Yeah. Okay. It's not my story. It sounds so much. You're good. 
not your story, but it's your show. Let's go. <laughs> no. So you start. So when when you were you you were projecting whatever it was, all of a sudden you want what they want and who they want and what they are doing instead of who you are, right? Yes, that's exactly got, it. Oh, yeah, you got so blinded that you know what? Because I can't do what they're doing because I they're better than what because I can't I can't I just cannot fit in because I do I can't do what they're doing because you're uniquely made. You yeah. don't have to know what they're doing, right? Oh my gosh, what a deception, right? Yes. Can we all go through that? When our eyes are not on Jesus and not on ourselves, loving us first, that's always the case. Whoa. Okay. So everything else was sort of spinning around and then. The and so this became something I could control. Yeah. And uh -huh. so at 16 years old, at 96 pounds, I wanted to be 64 pounds. And so I became oh severely anorexic. And there were all kinds of layers that built onto it, which is a whole other story I can share maybe another time. But basically the essence of it was, is I didn't be, want to be who I was anymore. Wow. I became suicidal. Yeah. Like there were all kinds of things that went into that season of my life. Right. And everything was like, I just don't like who I am. Yeah. If I could just change this, if I could just control this. So in a world where everything was spinning outside of my control, this was something I could control. This was something I could do, you know, do something about. And here's the thing that's very subtle that I feel like is important to know. Unknowingly, the people around me played into it and I'm not blaming them, but I think this is something that we need to be aware of because I got recognized. Oh, you're getting so thin. And that was said in concern for me. But what I heard it because anorexia is demonic. Can we just call a spade a spade? Anorexia is demonic. It yeah. was straight up demonic. Yeah. And even like if you knew all of the ways and the things I'll have to let me share one little piece of this. Yeah. So my parents are pastors. And before my dad got into full-time ministry, he was an advertising professional in New York City. He did television, radio broadcasting in New York City. And one of their clients was Dexatrim. Okay, well, wait a minute, um, uh, Rachel, before you go, uh, do that. Listen, guys, anybody, are, you're not exempted to be tempted by the en enemy. The demons are real. Demonic is real. You, you heard her. She was a daughter of a pastor. The mommy's praying for her. The dad's praying for her. But there is something there. So this is and why I, we're talking about this. Go and ahead. I went for walks with Jesus, right? Like, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a real thing. And so, um, so yeah. So one of their clients was Dexatrim, and they ended up firing them as a client because their side effects were so deadly. So I know nothing about this. My parents never said anything to me about this, but the very pill amongst the other things that I was doing with the anorexia, the very pill that I took was Dexatrim. And when I finally told my parents what I was doing, which didn't come out till the end, by the way, but when they finally heard and my dad heard that I had taken Dexatrim, he punched the wall. He was livid that the very thing he had taken a stand against, was the enemy had tried to use against him with his own daughter. So oh, wow. there is a testimony though. <laughs> That's a mercy of God. That is the mercy of God. It is the mercy of God. And so, you know, I'll just share. I mean, we're in this story anyway, which isn't where I thought we were going to go, but you let's go here. <laughs> Let's go here. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this because what he did for me, you know, one of my very good friends says a testimony is a prophecy of your future Absolutely. because the word testimony means do it again yeah. and he will do for you what he did for me. Man, this is exactly why we're here. Yes. So I don't know why I'm sharing my anorexia testimony that I never, ever share, but this is for you. And I want you to hear this from my heart, even if you have never struggled with an eating disorder, right. because for me, it looked like an eating disorder. 
For you, it might look like performance mentality and always having to have everybody's approval. For you, it might look like control in another way. For you, it might look like all kinds of things, mm -hmm. but the principle is the same. Mm -hmm. The enemy fears mm -hmm. who you are mm -hmm. because the identity that was woven into you from before you were born releases something in the world that nobody else can release the way you do. And so if he can get you to try to be like everybody else, or to literally terminate who you are that's his attempt to try to thwart what you're here on this earth to release why do you think why do you think though that people can actually be so so blinded i mean we we already said okay you know it's always the external but what happened how do how how can a person who's so blinded actually see it so this is what happened for me so round about this time, um, a couple of things happened. Like I said, my best friend almost died three times that year. And her illnesses were actually brought on by a short bout of anorexia that she had. Okay. And she saw what was happening in me. And she gave me an article about it to try to bring my attention to it. But this is how demonic it was. I was so angry at myself that I wasn't as good at it as the people in that article. To have to be hospitalized. Wow. That's how twisted. That's, that's the how word. twisted. That's the word, twisted. So twisted. I am a 16 year old girl in a loving family, you know, pastor's daughter, like all of these things, brilliant in school. I'm a ballerina, like on the outside, everything should be wonderful. But on the inside, I was a mess because I didn't fully know and love me yet. Mm. And so when somebody challenged, my identity is really what it was. Yeah. When that girl said that thing to me, she challenged my identity. Oh, guys would like you if here's this number one measure that you have in your life right now of success. And you will be successful if you change yourself to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's really the lie. I've actually never said that before. I just realized that as I was saying it, but it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the Bible says, that's why the Bible says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of the world. There's a pattern in the world that is manipulated by the enemy. There's a pattern, but that pattern has been broken on the cross. Come on. That's right. That, that pattern. That's why we are new, not even renewed, new, but we're new in Jesus. We're new. It's just that that pattern has been paid for, gone with, you know, dilapidated, whatever. It's just psst, gone. Yes. Yes. That's right. Woo! That's on. right. And then what happened? So one of my friends who saw what was happening mm -hmm. and didn't confront me about it because he knew that wasn't going to get anywhere, gave me Joyce Meyer's book, The Root of Rejection. Wow. that's sick. And I was like, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. I like pushed it aside mm. for months. Mm. And finally, one night, I remember it was like calling to me, you know, from my bedside table and I picked it up and I started reading it and I just sobbed because I realized that what I was actually trying to do was destroy who I was. Mm. And I remember falling out of bed onto my knees in my room weeping, broken, saying, God, I am so sorry. I don't know how I got here, but I can't get out without your help. And here's the thing with everything that was happening in my own home with this foreign exchange student trying to pit me against my parents and vice versa and manipulation and lies with my best friend dying, right? With all these things out of control, who did I turn my back on? Who did I get angry at? my best friend, God. And here in this moment of desperation, when I see in the pages of this book that what I'm actually trying to do is destroy who I was created to be, that's what broke for me. Whoa. Oh my gosh. There's just so much in there. That's so rich. First and foremost, that's an automatic response of a person that when something happens, they go stay away from God. I teach my kids all the time, when you're doing something wrong and you know you're doing something wrong, you go to God. When you are happy, you go to God. 
when you are depressed, you go to God in every situation. And right now, wherever you are around the world, I don't care, you're in Africa, you're in China, it doesn't matter. Go to God. Please go to God. You just say, God, I don't understand you. I don't see you. I don't care what it is, but I need you. Jesus, the one who died on the cross, rose again from the dead. You're the one that I'm calling because there's a lot of Jesus. Jesus that's, that never really rose up from the dead. Jesus that is still a baby. There's so many of those Jesus. But we say Jesus, the one who died on the cross rose again from the dead because that one is the one pursuing you come on yes pursuing you you think that he's so far away you think that he's the one oh, i want to cry rachel i've gone through that and i'm i hear there's so many you know kids and young adults right now going through the same thing rach yeah they don't know where to go did you see what happened to her that book was calling her god is greater than anorexia In yes <laughs> yes he is yes oh and i'm so sure the prayer of mom and dad are working guys the prayer of the righteous availeth much it will it works it changes things it does okay all right, root of rejection. You just said that so bluntly and so clearly. Root of rejection. Are you feeling rejected? You know, why don't you speak? Oh, speak. Uh, 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 um, break that off the, the Come on. right now, Rachel. You have that authority right now. Just break it off and before we go and continue. Sure. Come on, right now, in Jesus' name, we take authority over the root of rejection in your life, and we take that shovel and dig it out by the root. I speak over you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you know, Ruth, I am. I'm a Bible nerd. I love to look up what words actually mean. That word "wonderfully" actually means different. You are fearfully as in I am in awe of God and differently made mm -hmm. on purpose for a purpose. And I release into your hearts right now the ability to see the unique difference, the fingerprint of God in your life in a deeper way than you ever have before. I call forth and I speak to your identity to arise and awaken in you this day. From this day forward, your eyes are open to see your identity and the beauty, the beauty of his fingerprint, his design, his masterpiece in you. I release hope yeah. over your heart. Yes. Jesus. And for everyone who has been bound in the mindsets that oh, I was wow, that's a good anorexia one. or self-hate of any good. kind, I release over you. You are loved. Come on. You are loved. Come on. You are loved. Mm -hmm. Not for anything you do, yes. but who you are. Yes. You are loved yes. for who you are and who the people around you need more than anything else is exactly who he created you to be. And I release permission. Permission to, to you. Be exactly. Permission, yes. Permission to love yourself. Permission to actually have that light of Jesus. You know, in Ephesians, right? When the light of God comes into you, you see the riches of the glory of God within you. And we just speak that light. You know, Rachel and I have gone through this. And so we are speaking that over you, the light of God right now. Ding! Like that light bulb will just go, bang! And you see, oh my gosh. I am uniquely, beautifully made. The accusing spirit, I just command you to be quiet now in Jesus' name. The person that, I, the, the spirit that tells you, I can't move, I can't do it, I can't, yes, you can in the name of Jesus. We say yes to Jesus with you right yes. now. We pull you out where you are at. And I, we just declare right now, the light of God come penetrate through the central nervous system of your yeah. mind going all the way down to your heart and your eyes will open your ears will open your heart will open your mind will open in jesus name Come on. Ah. Ah. yes yes and you know Ruth, one of the things that i carry very powerfully is i carry two gifts that i want to give everybody who's watching right now Amen. the first gift that i carry is the imagination of god <laughs> 
And so I release over you powerfully right now, the imagination of God uh -huh. to dream with him uh -huh. and to see his beauty uh -huh. inside yourself uh -huh. at a whole deeper level than you have ever experienced before. Oh my gosh, yeah. And also, just like Samuel's voice was tuned to hear the voice of the Lord from the time that he was a young child, mm -hmm. that's something that I carry. And so I release over you open ears, the ability to hear the love of the Father yes. resonating in your heart with greater clarity than ever before. And to know that you know that you know that he hears and that you hear him. I release that over you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, you know, in your journey, right? In our journey, guys, I mean, there is God speaks. So I do not know whether you're just ignoring it or maybe you're actually crying. Listen, God heard it. God sees. And even he says, even before you open your mouth, he already knows. And he's just waiting. If you're just going to agree with me, honey, if you're just going to agree with me, I'm going to pull you out right now. I'm just, I'm just waiting for you. you. Just say yes to me. I'm going to pull you out in there. I'm, I'm ready. I'm here. That's what I saw. That's what I see. Wow. Yeah. Yes. As soon as I, and like, I am living proof of that, Ruth, because as soon as I cried out that night, yeah. my testimony is a miracle. As soon as I cried out that night, the anorexia was broken. <laughs> and it took a while. It took a couple years for the mindsets around food to be restored. But I started eating that very next day. Wow. And so that's not a thing that happens, right? You don't read about that in most books. You don't read about that in most medical journals. Like exactly what you said, I'm going to cry. Exactly what you said. The moment that I cried out, daddy, help. help. He was waiting the whole time to rescue me. And as soon as I cried out in that moment that I can still see as clearly as it happened, on my knees, weeping in my bedroom, saying, help, I don't know how to get out without you. In that moment, he met me and he began this journey of healing. And the identity piece would come later, but this was the first layer right. of what he wanted to do in my life. It's a progress. There's no regress. It's always a progress in the Lord. That first step is what we need. That first step to actually believe that he exists and say, help me, whoever you are, you know, but the one that died on the cross rose again from the dead. He is our deliverer. He is our redeemer. He is our healer. But more than that, he's our father. And a father will always do everything that is best for you and I. And so if you just cry, if you just, you don't even have to cry, just say, help me, please. God is excited. I'm waiting for you. And yeah. I love that, you know, you said, you know, the, the might, and you know, once you're done, you're probably, you're probably off that already. You're on the next step or in, I am frustrated with myself. I already told myself I'm not going to do it. I did it again. I missed it again. I, I Listen, did you just hear what she said? The mindset takes a while to get restored because of the pattern, the habit. Yes. That needs a little bit of time. But you know what? Just for her to say it was broken straight away, that is the key. And so we are, you know, Rachel, why don't you just speak over them the strength they need to just walk out? Yes. Walk through it, I mean, in Jesus' name. Yes. So there is a principle, as I'm sure you're familiar with, Ruth, in neuroscience, right? Where in your brain, thoughts, if you think of it like a field, right? It creates that path through a field. And the more you walk on that path, the more that it becomes furrowed in the ground. And the same thing happens in your brain. So when there are habits or even thought patterns, there's this furrow in your brain that has to be restored. But the good news is it can be. Yeah. And I release hope over you 
that it can be. And we speak to your brain right now to align with the truth of Jesus Christ, to align with your identity. I speak to your neural pathways right now to align with the identity that was woven into you before you were born with what heaven says about you. And that every lie and lying pattern in your life would align with the truth of who your good, kind, loving heavenly father, who is always better than anything we could imagine, Ooh. declares you to be right now in Jesus name, let this be so. Yes. And the thing is, you know, um, Rachel, this is the reality. That's the reality that, you know, it, there is there is a there is a pathway, um, you know. There is a, a renewing. There is a there is there is a path that you can go and create. But the at the, th the same time, the truth is that has been actually laid down. We were predestined to be free. We were predestined to be powerful and victorious and overcomers and more than conquerors. Come on. Yes. So, my, <laughs> I'm so excited. You know, it's just so exciting to be reminded. Because Rachel, honestly, because it's a progression. It is a progression. It is a walk. It's not sometimes a walk in the park, but there are <laughs> times and it's like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> distractions and girl powers and, you know, emotions here and there. <laughs> Boyfriend there, all oh, rejection, a little bit more rejection here, right? But you know what? That's the reality. That's not the truth, though. The truth is you have overcome. Come on. Jesus. Jesus is the real deal. Yes. And we usually look at what the situations are and not really supposed to be looking at the eyes of God and say, you know what? This is what is the truth. And that's what we have to stand on. So most of the time, Rachel, it's the emotions that rules us. Yes. Yes. And that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. And that was just the beginning of my story. I know. <laughs> A month to unpack. <laughs> so Rachel, um, can you just, um, because of all those brilliance that God has created in you, that wasn't really, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm talking about myself, but the brilliance, <laughs> thank you for being my guest. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you know, the brilliance that you have, the giftings that you have, that you felt like, you know, you were actually an outcast and don't fit in when in fact, you're the brilliant one because you're different. You knew that you're different. It's just that you never really appreciated that. But what, 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 what are the things that you have done that you actually was, were able to help yourself partnering with God, of course, by his grace? Well, what are the things that you have done slowly but surely that are actually like practical ways? Yeah. yeah. So I have to I have to tell this story if this is okay. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. So like I said, that piece, and I never connected these two until this moment. So thank you for that. Uh -huh. But that piece about the anorexia was me feeling like this is the measure of success. And if I just changed myself to be like everybody else, I could have success. And that was a theme that continued. So the morning of my 38th birthday, Ruth, I literally awoke to the voice of shame itself screaming in my room another year older. And what do you have to show for it? What do you even have to show for your life? And I felt like an utter failure. So at 38 years old, I was a single woman. I've been engaged before. And thank God I didn't marry either of them. Oh, <laughs> you know, which I didn't see at the time. At the time, you know, you see rejection, you see these things. You know, honestly, one of them was abusive. And I'm so grateful for what God spared me from in that. And so it's this journey, though, of everybody that I knew my age, all of my friends got married much younger and had children much younger. And that was my dream since I was a little girl. 
is to be a wife and to be a mother. And I wrote this beautiful story for myself that at age 26, when I've had all these life adventures, right? Prince Charming walks in. And that's not how it has unfolded for me. And so while I was growing a business, which was also not something that I saw any single women around me doing, right? And it's hard. It's hard when you don't have any other, I mean, it's hard to be an entrepreneur anyway. It's also especially hard when you are the only source of revenue for your entire household, right? And so as a single woman. You're, you're, you're saying that, you know, everything else was like almost like a false responsibility. Everything else is like, so it overwhelmed you a bit. Okay. Yeah. So here I was at 38 years old. My business was two years old, full-time at that point, mm -hmm. I would be asked to coffee all the time by these other people in my community. And they'd say, we just want to hear your story. And I'd look at them and say, why? And they'd say, well, you're so inspiring. And they didn't know that I would go home, Ruth. And when I looked in the mirror, all I saw was different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what made me so inspiring to them is what made me so shameful to myself but I didn't realize it was the same thing. So I woke up, like I said, that happened the morning of my 38th birthday. And that afternoon, I had a powerful conversation with my business mentor. I am so incredibly grateful for shout out to Dan Mori. He's amazing. And we were in my office and he had brought, you know, all this stuff. And as soon as I started talking, I said, Dan, do you ever question the impact that your life is actually making. And he just shut everything away. And he was like, where is that coming from? Like you and I both know that your measure of success is not defined by any of these measuring systems you're using right now in yeah. your life, right? Like the way that you are measuring success, that's not actually what is measuring the success of your life. Right. And it really made me think, and he, shared this very powerful video with me called, I think it's called the masterpiece or the master chisel, something like that. But basically it's about God's masterpiece in us. And I wept. I sat in my office and watched that over and over and wept. And I went home with my journal and Ruth, it began this journey that was like three months intensified, but then it really went over the course of a year right. of him showing me Mm -hmm. and taking me back through a journey about this word different mm -hmm. and all of the times that different had meant rejection that's what I associated it in my life right. but then he took me to these other we you know we're talking about mining my story for treasure right and so these other times were different meant adventure different was fun different was you know something exciting different was and he began to show me that I was never made to fit in. I was born to stand out. And this word different that the enemy had twisted as such a source of pain and rejection for me, you know, like the late Kim Clement said, your place of pain can become your place of rain. Like that's how it is for me. That word different was so painful. And yet my difference is a gift. And I want to say to you, friend, your difference is a gift. It is not an accident. It is a God-breathed <laughs> gift. And, right, I am made, like, part of the purpose for my life is to help you find the courage to own your difference. And so I had been made fitting in with everybody else and not yeah. finding my difference, yeah. I could never give you the courage to own yours. And so as the brand boss, that's literally what we get to do is help, feel free to jump in whenever you want, help yeah. businesses and business owners own your difference powerfully and authentically in the marketplace. And you know, Ruth and I were having this conversation about authenticity authenticity is so powerful authenticity is real authenticity builds trust and i believe there is a cry in the heart of people for authenticity that goes all the way back to the garden you know god showed me this thing one day about being naked and unashamed 
And it has nothing to do with your physical body, right. but it has everything to do with being fully revealed in the splendor of who you are. Yeah. And so that's how we were created to live. And so when people say things like, oh, that, you know, that's Instagram fake, that's whatever, you can spot fake a mile away because there is a God given cry yeah. in your heart for authenticity. Yeah. And so when you can have the courage to own your difference powerfully and authentically, that resonates with the people that you are called to love and to serve, whether that's in business or your home or your friendships or the marketplace or your school or wherever you find yourself. Why? Because there is a unique facet of God that you carry and nobody can release it on this earth like you can. And that's why he wove it into you. Absolutely. And so when we walk around, you know, trying to be like everybody else and fit in, we rob the world from the unique <laughs> facet of him that we carry, that we're here to release. I love that. I love that. And you know what? I, 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 you know, it's really about perspective. It's just the truth that you all of a sudden understand. It's really like, you know, you, you are in a situation and you can think 10 different thousand times, 10 different thousand things on how you're going to look at things. Right. But once the truth comes into you and then the light of God comes into you, you understand. I'm like, <gasps> It makes such a difference. I love, I love that measuring success. You know, um, the mother, I, the, the the adopted son of uh, Mama Heidi. I love Mama. Heidi. She's my friend, and she's like he was saying on 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 the pulpit. And this this used to be a you know a murderer, you know a thief, you know in in Mozambique. He says, you know what? People always want to be successful. You know what he said? People always want to be successful. But you don't have to be because you are born success. Yes. Oh, I love that. Because your DNA is the Lord's. And I love what Miles Monroe always says. He says, God will always make sure that you are successful. You know why? His name is on you. <laughs> Come on. That's right. <laughs> right. So I love what you're saying. And I love that discovery. And then you... You, when, when you know she she's so right the enemy will twist everything so try to see right now what is it that you are believing because the opposite is who you are and i have to do that here rachel i i am this is my first year in america and believe me there's so many lies that is presented right in front of my face mm -hmm. that i have to go and really like no even if it looks like it's so real now, no, my daddy doesn't say that to me. No, that's not from the truth. No. And sometimes though, Rachel, we need, we need that encouragement. That is why we are here. Because I know what it is to, because sometimes when you're bombarded with the same thing, you, you, the, the, the lie becomes the truth, huh? Yeah. Honestly. It's but, that neural uh, pathway. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's in your, but you know what? At the end of the day, God's not going to allow that. We, I love what you said. We lay bare before the Lord. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows exactly. I love that the pain becomes your gift. It, it is a gift, honestly. Oh my gosh. Just the ac acceptance of who you are. Just There's nobody like you. And I have to tell that to myself um, once in a while. And I'm almost 50, Rachel. And I still have to go. There are times, especially when you're when you're new to a place and everybody doesn't and they don't know you and they measure you up. That's so normal. People measure you up. I mean, I didn't have to go measure you. You're amazing. I mean, just straight away. And, but the thing is, you know, that's the human nature. And I preached about this. You know, the reality is we measure up the people. But and even Samuel, who was the prophet of the Lord measured people up he says oh this one this one because he he really looks good i mean this guy is and then the next son comes oh no no this is the guy right but that wasn't but yeah no it was david yes so i mean wow this is such i hope that you guys are understanding and i'm gonna have this woman over again we're gonna do a really big amazing time with unpacking all the lies that you and I believe, guys. Come on. I mean, let's be real here. Authenticity, come on. I mean, even the people that you look up to that have written 37,000 books, 
they have to choose every single day who who and what they have to believe yes. their identity in jesus or be robbed of something else right that's right that's Where's right it? i'm exploding right now. <laughs> no you're good you're good can i interject one little piece please big piece big piece so, something that god showed me a little while ago Ooh. is you know in the garden when the enemy came to tempt Adam and Eve, by the way, he didn't just come to tempt Eve, right? He said, <laughs> did God really say, uh -huh. did you know that if you eat this, your eyes will be open and you will be like God? Well, before that, she didn't think she wasn't like God, right? And in that moment, she felt like she didn't measure up. And so something that God spoke to me is that it's only when we feel like we have something to measure against that yeah. we feel like we don't measure up. Yeah. So wow. if you are feeling like you don't measure up today, I say this to you from one who has also walked and continues to walk that journey, right? Yeah. I want to encourage you, just like my mentor said to me on my 38th birthday, what are you measuring yourself against? And who put that measure on you? Because it's only when you feel like you have something to measure against, Come on. you feel like you don't measure up. Mm. And that is never how your heavenly father feels yeah. about you. Yeah. Not for one second, which by the way, is regardless of anything you do. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And <laughs> practically, I would always think of myself like a baby when I'm really hard on myself sometimes. Like I'm a child, okay? I'm a baby. I need to, go, if you know my, I'm three year old or a five year old, no, three year old, because it, it will be worse. <laughs> okay, three <laughs> year old. <laughs> and I have my nappy. <laughs> I'm playing, but apparently I already did. You know, I, you know, I need to be changed. But there are, you know, I just, I just say, daddy, I don't feel comfortable. I didn't feel, feel comfortable. You have to go and remove wash it i don't want it i just trust you to go and know that it is not good for me if you can go and remove anything just give me a shower yes just give me a shower god because i you know at the end of the day these things are that that measuring that measure that's such that's such a lie it is that's such a lie but you know the thing is it's easy for us to believe rachel because it's too obvious like oh I really, how come they can do that? I, I said, there, there are even sometimes, how come, how come, how come that person can do that, Ruth? You know, I would hear that too, that voice, right? Like, shut up in Jesus' name. That's right. You're That's not going right. to use my, you're not going to use my, this against me. You're not going to go, you use that. And can I talk about a yeah. subtle way it shows up? Go ahead. So this is, I talked about that journey in my journal. Yeah. How it started is that God said to me one morning, you have a self-imposed Cinderella complex that I never gave you. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, you are always serving and giving to everybody around you. Mm. And I was like, well, isn't that a good thing? And he said, no, it's actually a cover up for pain mm. in your heart because you see yourself as down here and wow. everybody you're serving is up here wow. and you, everybody around you is more valuable than you. That's why you're the first one to sign up for this and volunteer for this and do this. Wow. And yes, I have given that heart inside of you, but the mindset you're doing it in is, well, my values down here and your values up here. Therefore, I'm just going to serve you and serve you. <laughs> and serve Ouch. You. Ouch, Rachel. Ouch, Rachel. Because there would be times that I was like, I really don't want to, um, I, you know, I've never really, I, how do you say it? I never really charge for anything, for example. I never, because I feel like there's just so much, there's so much riches that I want people to know. And that's the truth, right? That's the truth, Rachel. I mean, that I feel like my life is, it's the Lord and whatever it is that I receive, I steward it, right? But there is a subtle moment where in, oh, that's too much. I yeah. want too much, 
Thank yep. You. And as, as a businesswoman, part of stewardship includes charging for your work, Thank which you. includes the overflow, right? We are here to release what God put inside of us. Yeah. But he never said, don't charge for it. In fact, in Proverbs, it says, there is blessing on the one who brings their grain to the marketplace and sells it, but the people curse the one who withholds their grain. Mm. The people curse the one who withholds their grain. So when you don't bring what you have to serve the people that you're called to serve, and by the way, give them the opportunity to invest in you and invest into their own breakthrough because good seed in good soil bears good fruit. So when you deprive them of that opportunity, that's what you're actually doing. You're actually depriving them. You're actually doing them a disservice. Guys, you have to sow seeds and beautiful, powerful women. Honestly, I, I mean, you know, this is probably the third time I've ever said this, Rachel. <laughs> in my life, you know, <laughs> you know, out of my overflow, I've always done the ministry. And then, you know, so I'm just saying, guys, did you hear that? Invest, invest for yourself. Do it. Plant good seed into good soil. Ruth and I just met and I can already tell you she is good soil and she is sowing good seed into you. So plant good seed into good soil and there will be fruit. And here's the thing. You plant where you want to harvest. Right. So I'm just, I don't know why I'm sharing this, but I feel like I'm supposed to. <laughs> so one of the things that God showed us recently in our own business is that we have been planting in an area that looks good from a Christian perspective. It looks good from an outside perspective, right. but it's not where the brand boss is called to bear fruit. The purpose of the brand boss on the earth is to empower the leaders of business to take their place in the marketplace and give them the tools to do so. That is the purpose of the brand boss. And we have been sowing seed into other fields. Mm -hmm. And it's good, but he called me out on it a few days ago. And he said, no, the brand boss invests. Because here's the other thing. We don't just throw away our seed, right? That whole thing about stewardship. Let's just go there for a second. That whole thing about stewardship. The stewards who were blessed in that story of the parable of the talents or the parable of the minus, depending on which version you're reading, are the ones who took what, they, what he gave them and multiplied it. Right. Which doesn't just mean, I thought that used to mean you just walk around doing this all the time. And he's recently made it very clear, like over the past few years, but even more so, no, 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 I didn't tell you to sow your bread. Come on. Right. I give bread to the eater and seed to the sower. I didn't tell you to sow your bread. I didn't tell you to walk around throwing it at all these things, even though that looks good. No, no, no. Like wise investors know how to make their investment work for them. Mm -hmm. They make money work for them. They don't work for money. And so as wise investors and wise stewards in the kingdom of God, we have the opportunity to take what he's put in our hands and multiply it. Jesus took the loaf and the fish and gave thanks and broke it. And it was in the breaking of it and giving it to people that there was multiplication. As we take what he's put in our hands and break it and give it, we are investing what he's put in us in things that multiply which should include monetary value, by the way. They don't always have to, but it should. And so when you invest your seed, be very aware of the field because wherever you invest that seed, you should expect that it's gonna multiply because it's being planted with right. kingdom. Right. It's being planted in the authority of the kingdom if that's how you're planting it. Now, if you just walk around throwing your seed, there's no intentionality on it. Yeah. But if you say, I am investing my seed in good soil, mm -hmm. then there should be an expectation right. because with planting comes harvest. Mm -hmm. So there should be an expectation. There is fruit from that. And I want to be very intentional. And I've begun to become more and more intentional about where I plant my seed personally and for our business and plant it in fields where we want to expect a harvest. So for the Brand Boss Studio, I'll just share this. 
we have been doing a give back situation where we have been sponsoring an organization that works with women who've been rescued out of trafficking. This is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Something I'm personally very, very passionate about. It's a whole part of my journey I didn't even share on yet. Yeah. And so um, in that, that is a good, beautiful kingdom thing. Yeah. But that's not who brand boss is called to. Mm -hmm. So we have been sowing seeds into a field as a company that isn't where brand boss harvests fruit. And I know that might be stepping on some toes, but I just felt like I needed to say that. And so because the purpose of the Brand Boss Studio is to empower the leaders of business right. to take their place and give them the tools to do so, right. we just made a decision this week that we're going to invest our seed into fields that empower leaders of business to take their place. Amen. And so whether that's your personal life, maybe you are called to rescue women from human trafficking. Are you planting your seeds in those fields? Maybe you are called to mothers. Are you planting your seeds in those fields? I love Mama Heidi. Are you called to the nations? Are you planting your seeds in those fields? Doesn't mean you can't give to those things. That's not, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying you can't do that. When you sow your seed, when you invest your seed for a harvest, be very aware of the field in which you invest your seed. You know, Proverbs 31 says she considers a field and buys it. Right. When you invest your seed, you are buying a piece of that field. So consider that field before you buy it. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I saw this, you know, in the Philippines, we have these paddy fields, right? You know, you don't just go and whoosh, whoosh. no, they, they, they one by one, and then they harvest the same. They expect in this line, there is a harvest. In this line, there is a harvest. And so, I mean, you know, but at the same time, right, you know, with me, I started with just, well, ever since I was 16, when I saw the, the need. That's when I, I'm like, okay, God, you know what? You use me to solve something and that's poverty. And I wanted that. And then when I had babies, I couldn't go anywhere. And I saw Mama Heidi doing exactly what I wanted to do and speaking the words I said. I sold my piano for that so that she can come to, to, to Korea because I want to be in the move of God. I know what I was sowing into. I invested in that. And, you know, God is, is so faithful. He multiplies you. But at the same time, you know, uh, Rachel, as I said, we, we progress, we grow, we grow into this. You just, you just said, you know, you just decided this week because there was another revelation. We are all growing, guys. You know, you maybe you're so religious and you're giving before, but, you know, now is a different day. You can go and change that now. Right. Yeah. And like I said, I just want to say it again. I'm not saying don't give to those things. It's not don't hear what I did not say. But I'm saying I feel like for me, as I mature in the Lord, and as I mature as my role as a king, right? Kings operate differently. Right. And so as I mature as my role as a king, and I hope this is okay for me to say, yeah, that I am learning how to intentionally steward relationships, finances, time, all of these things in a different way, because that's how a king operates. Mm -hmm. Now I can still, if God moves on my heart or if mama Heidi comes and I sow into her, I mean, I love sowing into Iris. So absolutely that's good soil. But if, you know, if this organization were to come across my path again, and God were to move my heart to give, it doesn't mean I can't give. But there's a difference between giving and investing. Yes. Yes. That's a good word. Absolutely. And Ruth is worthy of investment. And she might get mad at me for saying this, but you can't break poverty off of people if you don't have the resources to feed your own family. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, like she needs to be resourced to do what she's called to do. So I'm going to be so bold as to say, invest in Ruth, invest in this field. There will be an abundant harvest for you. And what you are sowing into is breaking poverty through what God's doing through Ruth. And then there is a harvest of that field in you also. Yeah, I love that. 
I love that. And you know what? Um, it was only here in America that I've seen the need. All of a sudden, it was like, wow, an eye opener. And I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm actually allowing us to go talk about it. And I feel like it's very, very personal already. But I feel like, you know, there has to be, there has to be a change, you know, and don't be afraid of you, you know, don't feel ashamed. I mean, in the beginning, if you, because of that religious spirit, you felt like, ouch, what are you talking about? Yes. You know, I thought that that was doing, and then, and then I realized, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, Bing! that's wrong. That's so wrong. And, but honestly, Rachel, it, the transition is hard. Any transition is hard. Anything that God is growing you into is hard. And before you create, before a bread is baked, there are so many things you need to do. Before anything, even just planting, you have to wait a long time for the harvest. It's, it's just the way it is. But I love what you're saying that, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be intentional. That's, that has been my word for the longest time. Intentionality. What are, why are you doing what you're doing? Yes. What is it for? What is your motive? You, you think God doesn't see? He does. And there are times I'm thinking, okay, I, now I'm starting, uh, Rachel, I mean, thank you very much for rebuking me a little bit more, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, now I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting um, in the habit of now the, 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 the change of the pattern. Now I'm getting into the habit of like, if I have done that before, that's how I grew, is investing in other people. You know, I pin down somebody when I say, huh, you're walking in LA for the prostitutes and bring them to church. I only have 120, I give you 100. Straight away, because I want to be a part of the move of God. Why? People need the Lord. You and I, my children, your children's children, we need God. No matter what you say, no matter how much money you have, no matter how good you are right now, did you just see the pandemic? Did you just see the pandemic? It stopped you from everything and tried to go and re release you from whatever it is that you hold on to and put your identity into because now all of a sudden, oh, I can't do anything. What am I going to do? Of course, there are, there are businesses that are booming. But once the pandemic came in, everybody is afraid. Don't tell me you didn't even feel the, the, the nervousness of like, even if you are the, you know, even if you are the richest in the world, you are not exempted to whatever happened, right? You are a part of the world. God created you and I. Sorry, Rachel, but. <laughs> no apology needed. Ooh, this is really crazy. Rachel, we need to go on. We, we will do this again. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we just went all kinds of places i didn't think we were gonna go so surprise you're welcome <laughs> we are going to have a <laughs> we are going to have like a, um i don't know anymore what the other word for conferences or an event with rachel and i we will be talking a, a lot about womanhood we will be talking a lot about you know what it is that you don't want to talk about what you need to talk about otherwise you're always going to be in there uh, be a prisoner of wherever you are now listen at the end of the day rachel and i we boast in the lord no yes. one else. yes no one else and i love what she said me too i am a woman of imagination and i use imagination to glorify god yes so we just want to honor this woman of God. So I need you guys to go and find Brand Boss. I There's a possibility that I'm going to go to her. <laughs> Come oh, on, we're ready. He's going to be our investor. <laughs> never know. But one thing that I love about this is there's a connection. I told her I didn't want to know her yet. I want this to be so raw. There's so many... Rachel, there's so many, there's so many organizations, churches, and all that that cannot show anything that is weak. It's true. But in our weaknesses, that's when the perfect strength of God is. Yes. In our mess, that's when He shows His kindness to us. So you know, let's just be real, right? So guys, watch out for this woman of God. We are gonna go and do something with her. I mean, I should have known you better. <laughs> <laughs> I will have this convocation of queens coming up, but you know Come what? On. I'll invite her, right? So anyway, 
<laughs> I'm just gonna go and do it with her one on one. You know, we're just <laughs> we're gonna unpack everything that that's a lie in your brain. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, before we before we stop this first, uh, I need you to go and just pray for an impartation of whatever God has. Uh, is, is, is speaking to you about any last encouragement for now because honestly we're going to do this we're going to do probably a three three day type of thing so i feel like there's so many lies that we have to go and really like expose for some freedom come on In jesus name go ahead uh rachel it's it's you know how long no matter how long it want you want it <laughs> okay so I just want to say, I know, first of all, Ruth said to connect with me. I want to tell you practically how you can do so. Mm -hmm. So my website is brandbossstudio.com. I will say we're redoing it. So stay tuned. Uh, you can also find me at, at the brand boss show on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I am at the brand boss underscore on clubhouse. And you can find us at the brand boss show and the brand boss studio on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, and also the Brand Boss Show on YouTube. And I have the Brand Boss Show podcast. So those are all different ways that you can find me. Um, but what I want to close by saying mm -hmm. is who this world needs you to be mm -hmm. is you fully alive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if you're familiar, Ruth. Are you familiar with the movie How to Train Your Dragon? Yes. Okay, so in that movie, more than anything else, Pickup wanted to be like all the other Vikings. That was so what he wanted to be. But in order to save the day, I won't give any spoilers, but in order to save the day, what his world needed him to be was Hiccup. What your world, what your family, what your relationships, what your business, you are not missing it, business owner. You are who God chose to lead that business. I want to speak that over you. What your company that you work for, what your school, whoever you are, what your world needs is you. Oh. You don't have to try to be anything you're not because you're actually robbing them if you do. You don't have to try to make something happen to be different. Yeah. All they need is for you to be you. And I'll share one little last nugget of branding wisdom with all you. So I had a powerful podcast episode recently with Dr. Darlene Mayo. I don't know if your audience is familiar with her yet, but she's somebody you're definitely going to want to connect to if you haven't yet. Uh, she is a neurosurgeon, neuroscientist. And so we were having this conversation about branding in the brain. And she said something that I got so excited about and found so fascinating. That there is actually a center in your brain where identity is stored. Mm -hmm. And then when we believe, like Ruth was talking about these lies and these patterns, it creates like this spider web of neural pathways over the identity center. So you can't fully function from your identity until those are restored. Now, when you are showing up authentically as who you are, it is scientifically proven, not some woo-woo thing. It is fact that the people whose identity center resonates with yours will be drawn to you. So whether that's your business, your relationships, your students, your clients, whoever you're speaking with, right? Whoever you are connecting with. The people will be drawn to you who resonate with your identity. Mm -hmm. If you are not showing up as you, if you are not operating out of your identity, you will actually repel the ones that you want to attract. But here's the thing. When you are showing up powerfully in your identity and operating from that place as you, did you know that has the power to free them to walk in their identity too. Mm -hmm. it literally breaks Ooh. through. We're calling it a brain break, right? It literally breaks through those neural pathways so they can operate from their identity center, from they can operate from the identity of who they are. So as you, as we like to say at the Brand Boss Studio, have the courage to own your difference, as you have the courage 
to be who you are. That has the power to set free the identities of those around you. Yeah. Own your difference. Because honestly, everybody else looks around for their purposes. Everybody wants to go and say, oh, maybe I'm like that. Maybe I'm like that. No, you go to the Lord and ask God, who have you made me to be? Yes. Who do you say I am? Yeah. Yeah. Who do you say? So here's a, here's a really practical example. I just did this with our team a couple of weeks ago and it was super powerful. Mm-hmm. Just get out a journal or something to write with and ask the Lord, what are five words that you say about who I am mm-hmm. and write those down and then go back and ask him. Now, when you say that word, like, so for me, one of the first words was adventurer. Mm-hmm. So when you go back to the Lord and say, okay, what does that mean to you? And ask him for the definition of that word. And you will start your day, your week, whatever, with five things that your good, kind, always better than we know, loving heavenly father says about you. And now here's the next step. So you have the five things, you have that description from the Lord about what those mean. Now take those and form those into a declaration and just very simply say, I am an adventurer. I am a champion. I am an encourager. I am a lover. I am whatever it is that he's saying about you and start declaring those because as you declare those out loud with your mouth, that's building a new neural pathway in your brain too. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. Uh, You know, that's why the enemy wants you secluded and isolated. Because the voice that you hear, you don't hear the truth. Because the only thing that you hear is your emotion and him. But there is a truth. And that's what we have to stand on. And those are so powerful, very practical. You need to tell yourself. (laughs) Because most of the time what we do is we say yes to the enemy. We accuse ourselves. We're harder on ourselves, right? And honestly, Rachel, you and I, we're talking about this. And we always have to go remind ourselves. So I mean, once in a while, we just really have to. That's just the way it is. There are times when you... When somebody that you love died, there some your relationship broke. You know, you're not feeling well because something happened. You're sick. You know, all these things are factors every single day. There is something. You have a decision. You and I have a decision. Oh, that's why I really want everybody to talk, you know, about this. Because honestly, sometimes it's just this, right? It's just this. There was a friend of mine that I was like talking about talking to and he didn't kill someone because he heard of a sermon come on oh and you know what this is not gonna probably it's not gonna cost me a lot but i'm gonna go and let you be heard everywhere so that you'll never know we would want our voice to encourage you that's exactly what it is all about yes pray for us and then (laughs) all right pray please an impartation in jesus name. come on Come on, let it be known that you are the perfectly designed masterpiece of God. Let it be known that you are fearfully and differently made, that every fiber of your DNA, every facet of your true personality, every strength woven into you, every facet of who you are was made differently on purpose for a purpose. And I declare over you that your life has purpose. Your identity has purpose. Your story has purpose. I release over you an impartation of mining your pain for treasure, of seeing those things just like I have walked through that have brought you pain and going back with the Lord and seeing how there is purpose in it for you. Not that he was trying to teach you something like a bad father would, right? But that what was accomplished in that, what are the clues? What are the treasure in that? And what are the clues to your purpose Mm -hmm. that are there that have been hiding there right in front of you the whole time? Just like that journey that he took me on. Because like I said a minute ago, he's not a bad father. No father would take their kid's hand and shove it in a fire to say, now you know it's hot, right? That is not how he operates with you. No. And so I just declare over you that you are going to go through these encounters. I release over you encounters with the Lord. 
in these places where there's been pain and wounding. And you're going to see it with his eyes. You're going to see these clues and these keys to your identity. I release over you open eyes to see your unique identity with greater clarity than ever before. And I release over you the permission, the powerful permission to show up with courage and be exactly who he made you. Because that is who you were called, designed, and created to be. And to release on the earth, I speak for a release of everything inside you, every treasure that he wove into your identity, every facet of him that you carry, be released in Jesus' name. And every lie be silenced. We just speak again, healing to neural pathways and freedom to operate in the truth of who you are. In Jesus' name, let this be so. Amen. Amen. Oh my gosh. Uh, the worker, just two seconds. <laughs> sure. Hi. Are you done? Yes, I'm back. Okay, okay go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we call live. Um, thank you very much. We speaking of authentic. <laughs> The, the 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 woman behind the brand boss the brand boss studio the woman behind the brand boss studio that's crazy that's crazy we just bless that more god Thank and you. let it be like like branches of the tree that will just go yeah. ching, 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 ching around the world Great. come on in jesus name don't leave i'm gonna go i have i have another word and guys thank you so much for being with us we are going to have her again so it's okay don't feel bad (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much rachel and see you next time bye beautiful powerful people of the world god bless you Bye. bye thank you